to give you a little introduction about Alex. So I wanted to have, uh, when I started IOHK, a testing framework for cryptocurrency development. So what does that mean? It means that I have a modular, concise uh, library that uh, people could use to build their own cryptocurrencies or model networks or test a new consensus algorithm. So I did what all people do in the cryptocurrency space. I started with Bitcoin Talk, and I float around and look at all the threads, and I found this one really interesting project called Scorex. And uh, the selling point was that it was written in Scala, and it was a fully functional cryptocurrency with only about 4,000 lines of code. Now, for comparison, Bitcoin has about 100,000 lines of code. And I said, well, that's really interesting. So I read the code, I looked at it, and I said, that's really smart. But what got me really excited about Scorex is that there was another repo unrelated to it where uh, Alex had written a cock proof for the FLPN possibility theorem. Now, I don't know about you guys, but uh, not many people do that as like a hobby on their spare time. It wasn't for a graduate project or anything. It was just something he did. So I said, okay, he's really smart. He's really special. So we, uh, we called him up, and uh, we've been working with Alex and his team ever since. Uh, and he's going to show off some cool things about uh, Scorex, uh, which is another open source project. All right, Alex. Thank you. One, one. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Right. Uh, so my pleasure to be here and uh, even more pleasure to give a talk. And uh, my talk is about Scorex, the modular blockchain framework engine. And I'm Alexander Chipunoy. Uh, I am working on very uh, interesting things in IHK research now. Previously, I used to be an NXT core developer and also participated in uh, some projects around Bitcoin. And uh, let's start to talk about Scorex. And the first part is what is Scorex in general. So let's start with use case. My idea is uh, uh, it's easier to understand why do you need for a tool when you have use case in mind. And uh, Scorex is essentially a tool, as I'm seeing it. Uh, so uh, consider you have uh, uh, some paper written, or maybe some paper read, and uh, you want to go from paper to code. Well, for example, uh, you want to implement new concerns protocol, like a uh, new proof of work protocol, or uh, proof of stake, or whatever. Uh, and you want uh, to see it in action after maybe some uh, very simple simulation. So, um, you want to plug it into some system and uh, to run a test bed then on, uh, say, tens or hundreds of machines and uh, to, to get metrics uh, and uh, to, to see uh, how is it working in a real life like environment. Well, another uh, idea uh, you can. Uh, going to be implemented is, uh, say, um, another transactional language. Uh, so you want uh, to have uh, the existing uh, proof of stake protocol, say, uh, bitcoins, and uh, then uh, you want uh, to change on the transactional part of uh, blockchain system. OK, so for me, um, there was a, a practical need, and so I started Scorex with some use case in mind, actually. Uh, the use case was uh, to see some uh, proof of stake uh, protocols uh, in action to, to get some metrics of uh, existing proof of stake protocols, uh, namely uh, NXT and uh, a few others. Um, another thing, uh, uh, I used to be well, there were two guys of us uh, made uh, Permacoin implementation. Uh, the first one open sourced Permacoin implementation, probably. And uh, so, well, th there was a need to, to, to have uh, Permacoin uh, consensus protocol implemented and then to, to plug it into some system and uh, to, to see how things are working in a real life like environment. Uh, so, what's the problem? Well, uh, now we have a uh, use case cons considered and uh, 
Uh, what's the problem with an implementation? So the problem is uh, if you are going uh, to play around uh, Bitcoin uh, reference implementation, so that's uh, more than uh, 80k lines of C++ code only, and uh, probably more than uh, 200,000 uh, lines of uh, code at all in different languages. So th th they have Python, testing scripts and uh, C++ core, maybe uh, so, so somewhat else. Um, in the same way, uh, Ethereum J uh, is more than uh, 55k lines of Java code. I think uh, Go implementation uh, probably is, is about the same uh, order of complexity. Uh, NXT is more than uh, 40k lines of Java code and uh, there is uh, another very big problem. So actually, uh, if you are going to look uh, to a code base of uh, working uh, cryptocurrencies, so it's uh, usually very messy because code base is also inherited uh, many artifacts uh, from, well, a a actual uh, cryptocurrency history. Uh, the, the simplest case uh, when uh, developers uh, have a choice to whether make a hard fork or to uh, have a more messy code because of handling uh, each case. So they're always choosing the latter. And so with time, uh, uh, the code is going uh, to be more and more messy because uh, uh, developers cannot deny a uh, working system. Uh, they cannot deny uh, po po production life cryptocurrency. So summarizing the problem uh, that is hard to locate, uh, hard to swap functionalities to desirable ones. And uh, so it is hard to make experiments. It is uh, hard to make prototypes. It, it is uh, pretty hard in practice uh, to go to fast prototyping. And uh, so here's Corex is coming. Uh, in general, the idea is uh, to find fast way to inject uh, desirable functionality. And uh, that implicitly, at least, means uh, the design is going to be modular. So you are uh, going on only to a part, only to a model uh, you want uh, to change or you want to replace. Uh, we also have... Uh, already a family of frameworks. So the first one externalized framework is Scripter, which contains uh, Scala implementations of uh, some uh, cryptography primitives. Well, wrappers for some well-known uh, primitives implemented uh, by uh, other guys. I'll give some details later. And uh, also we have some testnet application running. Uh, at the moment, there are just few nodes in the network and uh, you can join and uh, you can see some things in action. Also, everything is uh, open sourced immediately. There is no any bit of uh, code in some closet repository. So uh, you, you can see uh, every commit and uh, uh, every commit uh, in GitHub repo is, uh, is what I have on my local machine. So. Uh, everything is open. And also, it has a uh, Creative Commons Zero license, uh, so public domain license. Uh, means you can do whatever you want with uh, code base. Th there is no any restriction, that, that's the public domain. Exactly. And it's maintained uh, uh, by IHK Research, where I'm working. Well, uh, it would be not fair to not to mention competitors. So I started in uh, late 2014, and that was initially a weekend project. Uh, so I haven't uh, thought uh, it would become something bigger uh, at <laughs> that time. <laughs> uh, and uh, now uh, the, I, I, I believe uh, I was first with such an idea, I, 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 maybe, <laughs> I hope so. And uh, now um, there are some uh, 
competitors. So the most interesting one is uh, Intel's uh, Sawtooth Lake. Uh, it's in GitHub. Uh, also, and the Intel Corporation is describing it uh, in the same way. So the, they are uh, saying exactly the uh, Intel Sotus Lake is a highly modular platform for building, deploying, and running distributed ledgers. So the same idea. And uh, a few more words about Intel's product before going. Uh, into scoring details. Um, so they have a uh, modular design to basic kinds of models, so consensus, or they use uh, term uh, transaction family. Um, there are some uh, models implemented. Uh, probably the most interesting one is uh, proof of elapsed time. That's about uh, uh, leader election using trusted function to be run in trusted execution environment, namely uh, a chip uh, uh, going with uh, Intel SGX uh, technology. Uh, they also have some ESTS marketplace implemented and uh, the language is Python, the license is Apache. Okay, so let's go back to Scorex and uh, let me give some details on this Corex. Um, so, the implementation language is Scala. Scala is a functional language with a strict static typing. And the Scala is targeted uh, GVM platform, Java Virtual Machine. Uh, that means uh, uh, you can play with Corex uh, possibly with uh, any GVM language. So, Java. Closure, Scala, Kotlin, Groovy, Jython, which is uh, Python for GVM, or JRuby, which is Ruby for GVM, or Fraggy, which is Haskell for GVM, or whatever. And uh, um, the development philosophy is uh, around two points. So the first is to find the balance. Uh, balance or what? So um, if we are going to implement some flexible design, uh, well, it could be hard to understand uh, if you are uh, going to enter into it. On the other hand, uh, simple code could be not flexible at all. So we need to find a balance and that's uh, hard work and uh, we are doing uh, everything possible to, to, to have uh, somewhat good balance to, to find uh, proper notion of it. And uh, another point is uh, to give a developer uh, which is going to implement a prototype fast uh, to give a maximum for free. And uh, that, that's also a hard job. And uh, uh, let's take a look to design in general and uh, let's uh, think on uh, how much it could be given out for free. Um, so, Scorex is about Compact Core, which is uh, some uh, functions you probably need in uh, any blockchain system, and uh, also it is about some uh, interfaces uh, needed uh, to be implemented. And uh, Core is intended to be always for free. Uh, a consensus model, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's doing exactly uh, the, the, the job, as uh, you can imagine, so th th that's, that's uh, about uh, to find uh, uh, a proper order of state updates of blocks. Uh, and uh, you have to implement it if you're going to play with it, or you can take ready if you are going to implement with the other part uh, of design. Uh, in the same way, in transactional model, uh, is uh, about transactional language and uh, about a uh, notion of uh, minimal state you, you need to hold in order to validate transactions. And uh, in the same way, if you are going to play with it, uh, you, are, you have to implement uh, some uh, interfaces, or you can take ready if you, you are not uh, going to play with it. Uh, so network protocols, uh, P2P layer, uh, that's partly for free. Some basic things are for free. Uh, 
but you also probably willing to extend network protocols and uh, network uh, layer is pluggable so you, you just need to plug uh, your own protocols in addition to existing ones. Uh, the same for API and uh, having uh, those parts implemented uh, you need to define application. Uh, applications is just wiring of uh, different models and the application is really lean. Uh, I'll show you the uh, example of complete application further. And uh, well, wallet configs there uh, could be for free, uh, but you can enhance them. So partly for free, let's assume that. Uh, so um, a model is uh, uh, part of an application which writes and reads certain parts of blocks and uh, also it's implemented uh, some interface or some functions. Um, we are going uh, to take a closer look and uh, before that uh, let me say about code quality. Uh, so we have as compact code as possible also hard task, <laughs> actually. And uh, uh, we are also having already pretty good test coverage, uh, like 80% uh, uh, in combination with strict typing. That's pretty good. And we're also using continuous integration in order to uh, avoid uh, degradation uh, to be appeared in repositories. So, uh, let's get on started. We have some docu documentation. It's uh, in the wiki of uh, the repository in the GitHub. Uh, in order to install it on your machine, you need to, to have uh, Java 8 SDK and the for Scala, Scala build tool, SBT is recommended option. And, um, we are going to implement our uh, blockchain system. So here is uh, the first example of dependencies we are going to import. So uh, basics, Scorex basics is about the core and Scorex consensus is about two proof of stake consensus protocols uh, to, 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 to be uh, set. So, so you, you need to, 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 send, to set one of them in uh, config with ju just one line of config. And uh, Scorex transaction is the uh, simplest transactions uh, language that's um, as simple as uh, to transfer tokens from one public key to another. No inputs, no outputs, the, the, the simplest option. And um, in the same way, if you, you are going to use, uh, for example, uh, Pirmacoin implementation instead of proof of stake, so you are changing the second line, uh, so you are just importing another model. Um, then uh, we are defining applications, so uh, just some general settings and uh, we are defining models, simply. Um, then we are going to construct API. API is uh, to be constructed from pieces in order to get uh, UI for free. It will be shown later. That's it. And uh, then we are also adding some uh, uh, network protocols. So here we are adding uh, just a protocol uh, for uh, exchanging unconfirmed transactions. Uh, you, you need to to, to know uh, uh, transactional format. So it's not uh, for free. So you, you need to implement uh, that and just include it. And it, it will be wired automatically to other protocols. Um, and uh, that's, that's, that's all, that's all, yeah, that, that's the application. We can run and uh, we are going to launch it. Uh, so we are just creating an instance and uh, we are calling run method and now we have a working full node. And uh, we can uh, communicate with a uh, full node already running with uh, UI. Uh, just uh, go to browser and uh, call a port uh, in settings. settings. Uh, default is uh, 9085. 
And um, this UI is uh, to be generated automatically. So you just need to wire uh, parts in code and then you are getting this for free. So you, you, you can get new methods easily without uh, thinking about design or whatever. Um, in the same way, um, you can add your settings uh, here, uh, default settings. Uh, uh, so yeah, P2P port is uh, 9084, and RPC port for UI is uh, 9085. And in the same way, we have implemented our testnet uh, application called Lagonaki. Uh, it has Permacoin implementation as a consensus protocol and uh, simplest transaction model, so exactly the uh, tokens transfer from one public key to another. And uh, you can uh, launch it uh, without installing anything but Docker. So just run Docker image. Uh, the image is on Docker Hub. Uh, you can uh, you can run a Debian package. You can install Debian package. Uh, you can uh, go to run Lagonaki from sources uh, by visiting another repository. Okay. And uh, one enthusiast is uh, even uh, has implemented Block Explorer for Lagonaga. So it's available at uh, CryptoRevolution.me, and uh, that was made by enthusiasts. So don't ask me about domain name; <laughs> I don't have an idea. And uh, here, yeah, we, we see blocks, unconfirmed transaction pool, and uh, some general information. So yeah. And uh, if you are going to run your own private uh, network, so uh, you have to set your own seats in config. So if you're going to change uh, consensus protocol even, so just set it in uh, lagonaki.conf, uh, just change uh, the last line. Uh, so write instead of Pirma, NXT, or Quora. So there are three possible options. Okay, um, that's it. I'm not going to, uh, to, to to provide more details in order to be to be understandable and uh, in order to have compact presentation. And uh, what's next? Uh, so current version is uh, one two seven. We are going to another major release one three zero. And um, that would be about uh, flexible uh, state model support. So now uh, it's somewhat uh, hard-coded to account-based. So we are going to implement very flexible solution to support both Bitcoin-like, so input outputs, and uh, Ethereum and XT-like, so account-based models. Also, we are going to implement flexible signing schemes. Uh, for now, uh, EDDSA25519 is uh, hard coded in some places. Um, and uh, with 1.3.0 version to be implemented, uh, we will implement another testnet uh, called Tiragaki. Uh, we will have a new proof of work protocol, uh, name it role chain, uh, paper to be a period around to be published. Uh, it will be Bitcoin like. Uh, transactional models, so multiple inputs, multiple outputs, but uh, a more simplified language. Uh, uh, so uh, exactly about what was called uh, generalized uh, Schnorr proofs by Jan Kamenisch uh, yesterday. Uh, well, and uh, we also will have implement uh, uh, improved difficulty adjustment and uh, some more uh, uh, some of features uh, interested, uh, interesting to play with, and uh, white paper is uh, to be published in coming weeks, I hope. And um, now about Scripta. So Scripta at the moment is uh, implementation of incoming functions, and uh, also Scala wrappers for Java implementations of uh, some hash functions, including uh, modern ones like Blake2 or Kichak. And also it is about Scala wrapper uh, for 255 
one nine uh, signature scheme implementation uh, from Whisper system, uh, which is uh, been using uh, in uh, Signal uh, Messenger, so on millions of Android devices around the globe. So we are not going to implement uh, uh, primitives by on. That, that's better to have. Um, that, that that's going to 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 to, to use uh, well-known implementations, and. Uh, we are going uh, to add uh, uh, support for authenticated data structures. So Merkle trees are already implemented, and uh, now we are working on the authenticated skip lists, and uh, it will be in uh, next major release. And uh, it will be possible to change uh, with uh, just one line of code from in-memory persistence to disk persistence, and uh, it will be well about efficient implementation also. So if you need for some uh, persistent authenticated data structure and memory uh, and efficient, so uh, you can take a look to an upcoming release of script. And uh, we're also willing to coordinate uh, with uh, enthusiasts around the globe, so let's have fun together. So we are willing to see contributions uh, in the first place. If you are in code, you can write comments and uh, send pull requests with just comments. Uh, if they are reasonable, they will be included. Um, then you can uh, go to implement some to-dos. We have some of them in code. Just search for to-do string. Uh, some of them are easy, so it's better to start with them. Uh, we also would be happy to see documentation in form of blog posts, articles, wiki, pages to be written and send us. And uh, bugs, always please report bugs found and uh, we, we would be happy to, to see bugs found. We will fix them as soon as possible. And you can also participate in bug fixing. That, that would be awesome. And uh, if you want to implement uh, somewhat uh, more global, so you can, for example, use Bitcoin J classes in order to implement uh, Bitcoin uh, uh, UDXO model and the Bitcoin uh, scripts uh, as Corex model. Uh, so so uh, wrapping Bitcoin J functionalities in some way. In the same way, uh, it would be good to see Ethereum virtual machine implementation uh, uh, again, Ethereum J classes could be reused, I guess. And please reach us, so we have mail list, and we are reachable via GitHub, and uh, you can write directly to us, so better write to me in the first place, I'm Scorex director. Uh, you can write my email in our uh, team directory. So that's basically all, dear audience, and I would be happy to hear your questions, uh, feedback, uh, proposals, and the whatever you would like to say to me. Yeah, Thomas. So you have a running thermocoin, you said? Uh, yeah, it's available. So if I understand correctly, thermocoin is based on storing some large Oh, uh, for testing, we are not using big files. Uh, and uh, here is uh, the problem, you know, when uh, you are having uh, a file like stated in paper, like uh, 200 terabytes, you also need to build a Merkle tree on top of that. And th that's about a huge consumption of resources. So uh, on paper, that looks promising, but if we are going to, to use really a huge data set, so we need uh, also to handle uh, many issues in, in terms of storage and computation. So uh, for now, we are having a very compact data set, just in order to check some things. Oh, sure, sure, sure. And by the way, uh, we have no any responsibility uh, for, for the code. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, don't use it in order to launch cryptocurrency or use it, but we, we have no any responsibility and that's stated in the CC0 license. So 
Uh, yeah, that, that's not intended uh, to launch uh, production systems uh, at all at the moment. Just proof of concepts, right? Yeah, Jan? So that sounds like something that would really uh, be useful for universities to, to teach people uh, about to, to teach people about the cryptocurrency, right? Uh, yeah, I hope so. Do we do we have any partnerships with universities yet? With Scorex? We're working on it. So yeah, if anyone is interested, right? Sorry? So if the universities are interested in in using Scorex. Uh, well, uh, we have some talks around that. So they can reach you out about that, right? So they can reach you out about that as well? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I would be happy, in fact, to help the uh, academic community because, uh, you know, uh, I'm reading papers for breakfast and uh, I'm thinking how, how to have a uh, most flexible design possible to, uh, to, to have uh, uh, every paper imp implementable on top of Scorex. Actually, uh, well, uh, sometimes um, that's not possible, but in most cases, I, I guess that's possible with uh, minimal changes and uh, maybe with uh, no changes in the core at all. So, that's all. All right, guys, thank you so much for the breakout session. A couple more words about Scorex. Uh, we're accepting pull requests. It's an open source framework. Anybody can use it. Anybody can contribute to it. Uh, we'll be hiring more developers over the summer to work on it full time. Uh, we're also looking for interns and other people who may be interested on particular things. If you are an academic, a researcher, if you have an idea and you'd like to create a module or perhaps use this in your research, uh, feel free, the license lets you do it. Uh, it no charge, no royalties, no nothing. Uh, all I ask is you let us know so we actually can put you on the project page and uh, get people interested in your particular project. Uh, the other thing is that um, we've tried to keep the code as concise as possible. Uh, Alex, how many lines of code are you up to for Scorex? Still here, Alex? Alex, run away. Oh, there he is. A how many lines of code are we up to in the repo total? Co for Scorex, what, how many lines of code are we at? Uh, so Core now is about uh, 3,700, like that. So yeah. it goes down. Huh? So it goes down. Uh, so initially uh, that was a monolithic system of uh, 4,000 bytes of code, <laughs> and now uh, Core is more compact, but some more modules to right. implement it around that. Yeah, so Bitcoin has about 100,000, and so now we're down to four. And one of the reasons why we wanted to keep it so concise is we thought if you were a professor and you wanted to teach a class, wink, wink, about cryptocurrencies, this would be a wonderful framework for you to use with your students because it's easy for them to actually go through the whole thing in a week or two weeks as opposed to trying to understand the spaghetti code of ball that is, uh, of code that is uh, uh, Bitcoin Core. All right, if there are no more questions, comments, concerns, issues, yelling at us, uh, thank you all for coming so much. And it's been IOHK's absolute pleasure to be here and to present and also to sponsor this conference. Uh, we really love the opportunity and we're gonna love to come back if we can. Thank you. Thank you.